go down there, Diane. Let's go down there. You're like their number one favorite guy. Because you won them cash. Hi and welcome to a special tour report from Secret Golf. It's the Olympics this week and well, we're very happy to be talking golf. Of course, golf back in the Olympics at Rio 2016. It's now classed as an official Olympic sport. Um, ask Justin Rose and it's maybe the greatest honour in the golfing world. Anyway, I'm Diane Knox. I'm joined by Steve Elkington as per usual. And well, we're letting Jake Kaplan be part of the entire show this week. How do you feel? I feel like I've qualified for my own Olympics. I mean, I somebody had to represent the United <laughs> States. Clearly, I'm the best choice. Well, I'm actually the only choice, so that was easy to qualify for. But thanks for including me this week. I can't wait to walk away with a gold medal around my neck. I would like to just say that I am going to be the first on this show to say that we're playing this week at Kasumi Kaseki <laughs> Golf Club. And that was, that was, that was pretty average. Uh, did you want to take a crack at it, Diane, with a Scottish accent? Kasumi Kaseki. Kasumi oh, that was better. We have practiced this off air 50 million times. Yeah. Um, before we really dive into the um, Olympics golf this week, I want to say well done to both of you because you both made excellent picks last week for the 3M Open. Elk going with Jonathan Vegas and Jay, your pick for your dark horse was Ryan Armour and it was exceptional weeks for both of them. Well, I saw, I was watching the telecast yesterday. I own Pat Perez, finished 11th, secured his FedEx Cup standings for next year. That was good for him. I saw that, uh, I think Frank Noblo is picking Jonathan Vegas to do well this week at Kashumi Gasheki Country Club in the Olympic. <laughs> but we, of course, were one week earlier with our picks. We picked them to play before anyone else knew it. Jay and I were both able to secure top three finishes for our dark horse pick. So I hope everyone uh, enjoyed that. Uh, I needed a good week of dark horse picks and Ryan Armour, who I went back to after using him earlier in the season, uh, really came up clutch. In fact, he was the, I think he was tied for the overnight lead on Friday. So naturally I was like, oh, I've got this in the bag. But uh, I tend to get a little too confident at the wrong time in an event. But hopefully that catapults me this week. And I feel good about my picks because I had to have more than two picks this week, right? So it's a challenge for me. Yeah, so... There is three medals up for grabs, of course, this week. And that's how we're going to base our picks. So, well, let's talk a little bit about golf in the Olympics and the format. So it's four rounds of stroke play with the three lowest individual scores earning medals. So even though those guys are there representing their countries, there's no team element to this. And Elk, that can be a little bit confusing because when we do see these guys representing their country in the Ryder Cup and in the President's Cup, in the World Cup of Golf, it's always a team thing. But this year it's every man and women for themselves. Yeah, and, and you know, the Olympic golf phenomenon has sort of taken on its own life, Diane. Remember four years ago, or was it five, when they all went to uh, Rio, they were all worried about the Zika virus and there was players that elected not to go because of that. And it turned out that Justin Rose was on the recipient of one of the greatest publicity things that's happened to him. Everywhere he goes, he's known as the gold medal winners. And I think this week, the reason a lot of the players are over there, there's, of course, there's no money at stake, but this is sort of a one medal race, even though they are having, of course, uh, gold, silver, and bronze, everybody is going for that uh, top, you know, the top gold medal. And there's some good players playing. We've lost a couple, Bryson DeJambeau, poor John Rahm. I suppose in one sense, he's lucky, John Rahm, that he got to play the US Open and the British Open. He, of course, missed this and he's missed Memorial. So is he just a prolific uh, tester of COVID when being back? <laughs> anyway, that's all behind those guys. And off we go. We're going to give you our picks for this week. Yeah, I mean, that really is such a bizarre situation, having two positive COVID tests within a seven-week space. Um, and then, obviously, Bryson as well. Jay, I mean, those were two guys that were going to be at the top of really everyone's picks when it came to medals. So... I mean, it, it, I think it's a it's a crushing blow for just fans of golf and being able to have golf on such a world stage. 
Yeah, I think um, it's important that the best players play the Olympics. If we're going to, if the, if golf in the Olympics is going to have traction, it's got to have the names. Um, let's just say this is a one-off. Hopefully this is the last pan- pandemic of our lifetime. So we never have to face this again. But the fact that two of the big hitters and two of the exciting players uh, in golf aren't going to be here hurts it a little bit. But I think once the play starts, everybody kind of forgets. And now all of a sudden you're not just looking at the names, but you're looking at the little flag icon by each player and you're, you've got your rooting interests. So uh, it'll be exciting. Actually, it leads on to an interesting point that Rory McIlroy made at the Open Championship when he was asked about heading over to Japan and he openly was not excited about going, but he felt that he had a duty to his country and to golf as the broad sport to go out there and represent. Elk, we know that golf took a massive break in the Olympics, but in your heyday, you would have been out there representing Team Australia. I certainly would have, and I would have loved it. I uh, probably would have been over with Greg Norman or someone at the time would have been fantastic. And, you know, when I think about Rory, you know, he is sort of trying to sort of do the right thing. I, I read his article about, you know, his explanation about this. He wasn't sure if he was Irish or he was English because he has, I think, dual passports. And there was a lot of things going on in that man's head. And, you know, it's good to be over there. I, I guess he is representing Ireland. Is that right, Diane? Yeah, he is. Yeah. Him and Shane Lowry. <laughs> so, I mean, it's going to be, it's an amazing experience. You talk about Justin Rose, Ricky Fowler with the Olympic rings tattooed on his arm. Ricky not there this year. And we talk about Rama and Bryson withdrawing. They were replaced and Bryson for USA was replaced by Patrick Reed. And uh, we know he's affectionately known as Captain America. So... I'm sure with that being a very last minute addition, he's got to go through all the protocol testing and stuff. So it could be an interesting one as well. He's going to be arriving pretty much the day before this all gets underway. Yeah. And I don't know, you know, yes, I would like to be an Olympian and go over and do the opening series, but I don't know if this particular Olympics, Diane, will be a good experience. And I'll tell you why. It's a long way out of town. These players are under very strict mandates, no family members, no galleries at the golf. So it'll be essentially like playing a practice round or a college tournament. Yeah, they know all the, they'll know all the people in the event. And, and, and really, is it really going to be a feel like an Olympic event? We'll find out. But I would say it's pretty flat right now. Weather is approaching possibly typhoon on Sunday. Will that mean we have to handicap this to get people off to a quick start in case they have a 54 hole close for the medal count? Well, we've taken all that into account for our show today, of course. We have. So coming up, we are going to talk a little bit more about Kasumi Gaseki Country Club, the host course for Olympic golf this year. Also, we're going to be looking at our picks. So the way that we're going to do them is we're each going to do a gold, silver and bronze. And then we're going to give you a little bit of a dark horse as well. So that's coming up on this week's special tour report. Compete against your friends on PGA Tour events. Win cash and bragging rights. Test your golf knowledge. Experience the success and failure of PGA oh, Tour players. Man. SG Tour app is an engaging golf experience designed by professional golfers that created a variety of games, including single and multi-day games, as well as tournament long contests. It's really simple. Join or create a game. Pick four players and win cash. You can even immerse yourself in interactive features, including course strategy, putt predictor, and daily content exclusively from PGA Tour players. The word is out and golf fans are catching on. So don't miss out, download the SG Tour app now. Well, this week, Olympic golf at Kasumi Gaseki Country Club, of course, in Japan. Uh, We're giving you a very special tour report this week. We're going to be giving you who we think is going to win the medals, bronze, silver and gold. Right, Elk, let's talk a little bit about this course. Yes, traditionally, Diane, I've been to Japan many times to play golf. 
Japan is landlocked, so it has very little land left over for golf. And you finish up with these golf courses that are very on small acreage, on very narrow fairways, a lot of dog legs to fit into these, uh, you know, into these areas. I don't know a lot about this course, but traditionally speaking, and I've read some of the caddy reports, I've listened and listened on social media about what this course is all about. Some have said it's like Hilton Head, some have said, you know, other courses, but we are going to find that this course will be probably traditional Japanese narrow. Uh, you'll have to keep the ball in play. And that's affected my picks a lot. Of course, all the picks that I'm going to talk about during the show will be all guys that are in form or have history here. That, that tips the people off right there. But yes, Japan golf is very narrow. You've got to hit the ball very, very straight in Japan. Okay. And, um, you know, you mentioned Harbour Town golf links there. I read something, Tommy Fleetwood and his caddy had been out having a look at the course early on. And Tommy had said that he didn't see it as a course where guys were going to be pulling driver and blasting it on the tee. So like uh, Harbour Town in that sense, but at 7,600 yards, you know, as you said, they don't have a lot of space. So, you know, we're going to expect a lot of dog legs and corners, a, a lot of very deep bunkers as well. Only water on one hole. It's going to be on the 18th and it's going to be in play. So there's an interesting mix of, uh, of problems that we're going to see the guys face this week. Well, if they do push the course back to 7,600, which is quite long in Japan and it is narrow, that'll even make it narrower. Mm -hmm. So... Um, it'll favor a certain style of player and it's going to be no uh, mystery of who I pick this week, Diane. I've, my, my picks are loaded with form. Okay. Well, let's get into it. So as we said at the start, this is, you know, the guys are not representing, they're representing their countries, but they're not playing as a team. So individual names and everyone's going for the gold. So this week on the tour report, we're going to give you, all three of us are going to go through our, bronze, silver, and gold picks. And then we have a little bit of a dark horse to throw into the mix as well. Elk, do you want to start? I certainly will. For my bronze medal choice this week, Diane, I'm going with Canada. Corey Connors is in tremendous form. We all watched him play very well at the Open Championship. Uh, like about fourth in ball striking, 30th in proximity to the hole. When I think of Japanese golf, I'm going to take Corey Connors for a medal this week. There's some guys that I'm, I'm picking above him that are playing even better, but I think Corey Connors is going to get a medal and I think it's going to be a bronze just because of the way he plays golf and hits the ball very straight, nice rhythm. And I think that's going to serve him well. He had a fantastic Open Championship as well, especially at the weekend, and ended up finishing in a tie for 15th. But we saw that elite play from Connors at the start of the year at the Players' Championship at Bay Hill. I mean, he was in contention, it seemed, week after week. So he's got one win under his belt on the PGA Tour and taken it to the world stage. Very proud to represent that Maple Leaf. No doubt about it. You know, he, he's a very solid striker. Um, Corey Connors is going to win more events on tour. He's just stumbling up against some guys that are very, very hot. He played well at the Augusta this year again, and, uh, you know, was right there with Matsuyama. He, play, he got ran over a little bit at the Open with Morikawa and, you know, Spieth. But he's right there, in, in the, and we're talking about Corey Connors all the time, and we're talking to him, we're talking about Corey Connors in a certain sense of the way he strikes the ball. He's a straight player. Yeah, so I love Corey Connors. He's been playing great. I just don't think this is the event where he's going to actually press it because um, the field's so good with these top line players. Um, the other thing is, it's just it's hard for me to take a Canadian in the Olympics. They just uh, name a Canadian person that other than Ben Johnson, who was doped up and beat Carl Lewis, and everybody remembers how controversial. Canada doesn't do anything in the Olympics. They're not going to do anything this year, and they're not going to do anything in golf. But I do love Corey Connors. It's no indictment on his game. I just don't think this is going to be the week where he travels around the world and, and performs. But, Elk, I, I can see why you'd go with him. He's, he's one of our favorite players. We pick him a lot on this show. Do you have a counterpoint balance for your bronze medal pick this week, Jay? I do, and I'll tell you why. This is a kid, and I'm going to use the operative word kid here, who has come out 
on tour and he fits the the mold of these young players kids that are ready to actually not just compete but not only win but they can win around the world and we talk about motivation a lot Elf. that's a big thing that you bring up every week like does this guy actually want to be here what is his purpose for playing and i feel like this young player represents a country where no matter where he would finish on the on the podium it's going to be a big deal not to mention the kid can strike it uh he's ninth in driving distance he's 15th in ball striking so there alone tells me he's going to be in play and in contention on every hole so my bronze pick representing the great country of chile is joaquin neiman it's very hard to go wrong with Neiman, and I'm just looking at their odds because we have them here. He's 22 to one. Cody Connors for you, Elk, 25 to one. So probably right about for the bronze medal when it comes to the Vegas odds. Now, Diane, I saw in pre-meeting, you have some unusual picks. Are you going to have a, a story to tell here on your bronze? Always have a story to tell. Always. He always has a story So, to tell. my bronze pick, and Elk, I'm ashamed of you for not representing your country a little bit more. Team Australia, for me, my bronze pick is Cam Smith. Now, I have many reasons as to why. I think the, the ultimate reason is the pride that he has for his country. And it's been demonstrated in the fact that that beautiful mullet that he has, he has shaved AUS in the side. So, I mean, he's fired up, he's ready to go. Cam Smith um, is coming off all right finishes playing the Open Championship, um, obviously the US Open right before that, kind of middle of the pack, which is fine, no panic about that. I mentioned the pride that he feels for his country. He finished runner-up for Australia at the World Cup of Golf with Mark Leishman. The two of them won together at the Zurich Classic in New Orleans. They're going to be playing President's Cup together. So I just think that he has a lot of pride that will drive him on to do well for Australia. The number one reason is he is first on the PGA Tour for putting average right now. How on earth could you ever overlook someone who is number one when it comes to putting? So my bronze medalist is Cameron Smith. He's a true Aussie, and I have not finished talking about my picks yet. So I, <laughs> but I do, I do thank you for for putting the Aussies in there. That's yeah. great. Yeah, okay, well, you're welcome. Okay, so those are our three bronze medalists. I'm going for Cam Smith. Jay picked Wacky Neiman, and Elk going for Corey Connors, the Canadian. Coming up next, we're going to go through our silvers, and then of course our golds, and we're going to throw some dark horses into the mix as well this week for the Olympics. Get in the game on the SG Tour Golf Gaming app and play four ball. It's a classic stroke play competition based on the aggregate scores of four players. Who makes your team? Well, pick four guys, one from each tier based on the current world golf rankings. Want a tip? You need four guys to make the cut. Get in the game on the SG Tour Golf Gaming app, available on iOS in the App Store. Olympic golf this week, and we're giving you our top picks here on the Tour Report. I'm joined by Steve Elkington and Jay Kaplan this week. So we're all giving you a pick for bronze, a pick for silver, and a pick for gold. We'll do some dark horses as well. Right, we're on to silver. So Elk, we will start with you again. Diane, it's going to be hard for me to get these words out of my mouth, putting the Colin Morikawa, the hottest player on earth, that I have to slot him somewhere in the silver category for a, for a medal this week, Diane. The number one driver on tour, the number four proximity to hole, more importantly, the number one in both categories in this field this week. Colin Morikawa just has a, a claret jug under one arm and he may leave Japan with a silver medal around his neck, Diane. But yes, this is a metronomic, if that's a word, a swinger of the club, straightest hitter the tour has produced since maybe Johnny Miller. Will that parlay into something for him at this course this week? Absolutely it will. He's got a little rest even after he won the Open Championship. So Morikawa will 
only be beaten by one guy in my mind this week, silver medal. It's just incredible when you think about Colin Morikawa and everything he's achieved in such a short career. He's got two majors and now he gets to compete for the USA at the Olympics. The boy is living the dream. And as you say, he got to go home. I saw a very cute picture of his little dog. It's like a, a golden doodle or something with the claret jug. So nice little bit of family time. I also saw that his girlfriend's flying out to Japan with him. So he'll be rested, he'll be feeling good and um, hoping to add an Olympic gold to that ever increasing collection. Yeah, and, and Morikawa is very interesting to me, Diane, because he's sort of doing it in a different way than the, the typical tour player is right now with so much talk about distance off the tee. We don't hear about that with Morikawa. We saw him control his golf ball uh, at the Open Championship with a three wood off the tee, playing a power fade. He spoke also about how he controls, he's been learning since he was in high school, how he's allowed to control what his brain thinks about and what his brain doesn't think about. I think this is going to be a point of interest for tour players going forward. I think the tour has a tendency to burn out players early. We're seeing it with Wolf. We're seeing it with uh, Cameron Champ a little bit. They're having some they're stumbling around out on tour thinking about things. And Morikawa has streamlined that. And I think we're going to hear a lot more about that. But yes, Morikawa is a very exciting player. Come out of Cal on a rocket ship, you know, <laughs> career launch right now. Jay? What do you think about my pick as a, I know you, you, not only today are you interjecting your picks, but you're also critiquing mine. This is, I like this. Yeah. And, you, you know, this is exciting for me, Elk, because normally I wait until you're gone uh, during the show. And then I talk trash about your picks. You don't hear it unless you watch it and review. This week, I got to look into the eyes of my opponent and I'm ready to do that. But how am I gonna argue against the best player in the world right now? Um, you can't, it's a great pick, but I will counter it with what I think is, is a player that kind of fits in this mold, right? This player, also a very, very skilled player at a very young age and came through the college ranks in the US but he's a bit of a vagabond, right? The kid during COVID drove to every PGA Tour event just to enjoy the being in the United States and seeing places he, that he has yet to see. That says a lot about this guy, that he's gonna have no problem acclimating to the long trip over. And he plays at a very high level. He's coming off a T12 in the Open Championship. And I think everybody knows that this guy's gonna be a, a winner and a multiple winner and probably a major winner uh, at some point. I'm gonna go ahead and say he's going to press it this week and really get into the conscience of the international golf world where a lot of players, and we've looked at this chart when we spit the chart out, Elk, as you know, that last sheet on the chart were guys that we really had to kind of not just study their pronunciation, but maybe some some of the countries that uh, are participating in the Olympics this week. But this guy's coming. Uh, he's a, a Norwegian, but he played in the U.S. in golf He uh, for golf. His numbers are consistent across the board. He hits it straight. He hits it far. He's going to be close. He's going to make a few putts. That is the long-winded version for me to say <laughs> that Victor Hovland is going to walk away with a silver medal around his neck this week. Well, it's a great pick. He travels well. You're right. NCAA champion, U.S. amateur champion, multiple PGA Tour winner. Now the first Norwegian to win on the European Tour. Will he be able to hang a medal and get on the podium, Diane? That is the question for you. I am all about Victor Hovland all the time. And my main reason for it is I think he's just got such a mature attitude on the course as well. And I, you know, talking about tr driving from tournament to tournament, it, that seems such a small point, but you know, for him, that was probably a real like soul searching time and getting really accustomed to his new life on the PGA Tour. Cause we forget this guy's so young still, you know, early twenties. So he's always smiling. He always looks happy. I think he's another one that's just gonna relish this opportunity to be out there. So yeah, Victor Hovland, definitely silver, if not a gold pick. So I like it. 
Well, before you tell uh, me your silver pick, I would say that won't it be nice to to watch the game grow a little bit? And we have a Norwegian golfer, male, that we're talking about meddling this week. Uh, what a thrill it'll be for him to be in the open ceremonies. Okay, well, my theme of the week is a little bit of loyalty. I took the loyalty for you with my last pick by going with an Australian, but this time I'm sticking to Team GB, and my silver pick is Paul Casey. Now, Casey is, you know, I don't want to call him a veteran on tour because, well, he's late 30s, early 40s, but he's, well, early 40s however he is he's still one of the best ball strikers on tour and that's gonna obviously travel well to any course he's been working hard on his putting we know so his stats probably don't reflect just how much better he's got but when you look at his past results on big stages so just coming off a 15th place finish at the open championship a seventh at the us open a fourth at the pga championship a fifth at the players championship this season for him is fantastic so he is also going to be influenced by Justin Rose winning that gold medal for Team GB in Rio and just how much it meant to him. I'm sure Justin Rose keeps that gold medal in his golf bag at all times. <laughs> Hi, look what I have. But I think how great if the UK could go back to back Olympics with medals. So Paul Casey, he didn't quite make it into my gold category, but I think he's a solid silver. Diane, I'm going to take, pick up a little bit on how Jay punishes my picks, but when the Queen wakes up on uh, next Thursday morning with her cup of tea and her biscuits to look at the golf on TV, I honestly don't think she's going to be eyeing in on Paul Casey to win a medal. But I may be wrong, Jay. What do you think? Oh, okay, I'd even say if the Queen wakes up, which I hope she does, she will be disappointed that Paul Casey will be nowhere near that the... Way top of the podium. Uh, he's not even going to be on the radar. But Diane, it wouldn't be you if you didn't pick with your heart. So that isn't uh, really that issue. much of a heart pick. I think it is. I think you're sticking to the uh, I think you're sticking to the UK. And um, if he was I, Scottish, you know, it would be a heart pick. But you know how Scottish people feel about English. So if it was I, a heart pick, I wouldn't be going with it. <laughs> oh, you're not leaving your let's say it's more of a parochial pick then. you're kind of sticking to uh, your neighbor. But um, I'm looking on my chart for any Scottish players and wondering why they haven't been picked yet. There's none, but we actually do have a huge Scottish representation at the Olympics this year. Just golf is not that sport. <laughs> All right, just not for this show. I didn't, right. realize, well, I had, did. I didn't, I didn't realize I had throwing rocks in the Olympics this <laughs> year. We're very good at athletics, at curling. There's actually more Scottish women competing in the Olympics this year than there ever has been before, so. Well, well I'm, I'm for that. Again, uh, okay. women and the Scottish women and rock throwing does make a lot of sense, so Val, you're on it. So our silver picks are El Going with Colin Morikawa, Jay for Victor Hovland, and I'm saying Paul Casey. Right, next we're going to go through the gold, our top picks, and some dark horses for a bit of fun. Play Money Grabber on the SG Tour. Instead of strokes, it's all about the cash. You pick a team of four players, one from each tier, and scoring is based on the money that your team wins. Your guys missed the cut? No problem, you're still in the game. The SG Tour Golf Gaming App, available on iOS in the App Store. Well, we're talking Olympic golf this week on the Tour Report from Secret Golf. We are going through our picks. We're doing them in bronze, silver and gold categories and we're on to the gold. So we each have a pick as to who we think is going to be the Justin Rose of Tokyo 2020, which is actually in 2021, stupid COVID. So Elk, who is your gold medalist for the Olympics? Well, I've waffled back and forth on this pick so much, Diane. When I thought about the Masters this year and Shigeki Matsuyama winning the green jacket and going back to Japan and doing basically a month long of interviews and all the pressure that came around that and they all talked about, would he be the one that you know lit the Olympic torch? 
And then I thought, how much pressure would be on him to play this week with the crowd or the Japanese crowd just willing him on? They love their athletes so much. But then I thought, there is no crowd this week. So the pressure comes back off his back. And will it be an easy walk? This man's won twice on this particular golf course as an amateur, knows the course better than anyone in the field, probably a one stroke uh, advantage on each nine. That's eight strokes over the course of the week. Matsuyama is going to bring home the Masters green jacket with a gold medal to match the little logo of the Augusta green jacket this week. What a story. It would be the ultimate story of the Olympics if Matsuyama went out and won gold, for sure. Jay, what do you think about all that from me? It would be a great story. I I don't think anybody would refute that. And um, it would mean a ton for his country. And as we know, Japan's a golf crazed country. So um, it would be a big deal. However, it might be too big of a deal. That is a lot of pressure on any athlete. In fact, in tennis, you have Naomi Osaka, who's trying to win a gold medal in tennis and everybody expects she's going to do it. I think everybody expects that Matsuyama is going to do it. I don't know why they wouldn't. He's won here twice on this course as an amateur. Everything's lining up for him to win, except that is a lot of pressure. So I'm going to kind of dovetail elk off of... Can I just say one thing about it as well? Sure. That he's coming off COVID, so he had to miss the travelers. No, it was the Rocket Mortgage, sorry, in Detroit. He had to withdraw because of COVID. Then he had to miss the Open Championship as well. So but we don't know if he actually had it, like the, the John Rahm version of COVID or not. So yeah. it's hard for us to handicap all that when we don't know what, what it's all about. We don't know if he had any, if it was symptomatic at all. So and for all we know, he was playing the course every day when he went home. And yeah. who, who knows what? It may have been an advantage for him. Who knows? Okay, it could have been. It could have been he's home, not in the open, and he had an extra two weeks in Japan to get ready for this event. Okay. Well, I will tell you that my pick uh, got ready for this event by winning the Open Championship, hint, hint. So it's not going to be easy to figure out that I absolutely love Colin Morikawa this week. And because he's got the game uh, that travels anywhere, he's one of the probably the best ball striker right now on tour. He ranks second, as a matter of fact, in our on our chart. Ninth in proximity to the whole putting average fifth. So the numbers don't lie. It's almost impossible not to look at him as the odds on favorite. In fact, Vegas does. He's seven to one to, to, to walk away with the gold medal. But imagine now what it would mean, not just to him, but to his family with the Morikawa name to go to Japan and win something that he can attach to his legacy. And you know that if Matsuyama doesn't win, that the entire country of Japan would love to see Colin Morikawa walk away with a PGA, an Open Championship, and a gold medal. And he's gonna have that, the Open Champ, the Claret Jug and a gold medal within a month of each other. You talk about a career in one month. That would be spectacular. I'm counting on it. I wanna hear the stars and stripes. Colin Morikawa is my goal. Okay. Well, that's a nice story. My story was better. Diane, it's <laughs> your story. <laughs> well, my pick, Elk, you're gonna you're gonna come at me for this one, and it's fine. Because see, to be honest, I don't even fully believe what I'm saying. So we talk about a heart pick. This to me was a little bit of a heart pick. Um, he's not representing Team Great Britain. He's representing the USA. My gold medalist is Justin Thomas. Wow. <laughs> now, I know you love JT and you always say he's a lifer. He's one of these people that's going to be out here playing at a high standard for a very, very long time. There's not a lot of form. Um, there's really not a lot of form. <laughs> Finished 40th at the Open Championship. Um, you know, fine. We've seen some real problems with JT, especially on the greens. The putting has just been very un-JT-like. He's still ninth on the PGA Tour in putting average. The main thing for me is he has been on social media just talking how much it means to him to be representing the USA. And we've seen that before with the Ryder Cup and with the President's Cup. 
he could be the new Captain America and I think this is going to be something he's been thinking about and working towards for a long time. So Justin Thomas is my gold medalist. Diane, everything you said about Justin Thomas is true. He was a national champion at Alabama. He was on the winning Walker Cup team. He is a PGA champion, multiple winners, the players champion this year. The problem that JT has, Diane, is his ball is not doing what he wants it to. He's working on his putting so hard. He's got a lot of speed in his swing. Is that going to work its way into a very narrow long course this week in Japan? No, he's not. He's not going to beat the guys that I picked this week, but I love Justin Thomas, and I know you're very passionate about it, and I am too about his goal. But Jay... What do you think about JT? That was such a down and depressing lead-in to her pick that I popped an antidepressant and uh, I have a bottle of liquor beside me. I'm so, I'm trying to figure out how you could lay out a claim that your gold medal is going to hang around the neck of somebody that you're so clearly down on. It's almost like reverse elk. I feel like she's trying to lure us in and feel badly for her and then she's going to walk away with gold and rub it in the rest of the year. So it'll be, a, it'll be a good story if she pulls it off. I, I'll say I, I will tell you that um, I'm with you out. Justin Thomas just there's just something off. I think with a player of his skill level to be performing how he's performing, something's not right. Um, I'd love to see him turn it around for the good old USA, but I don't think this is the week he's going to do that. I was about to say, what a week to turn it around. So anyway, we're going to have our own little medal ceremony, gold, silver and bronze next week. But Elk's gold is Hideki Matsuyama, Jay is going for Colin Morikawa and I have picked Justin Thomas. Okay, well, we have one more section of the show to come. We're looking at a dark horse, so someone that's a little bit out of this, like, very low odd category. And, um, well, we will give our reasons for them next. Saturday is considered moving day, and you can play along on the SG Tour. It's a one-day stroke play competition where you select a team of four players to shoot the lowest scores of the day. Will you make big moves? Download the SG Tour Golf Gaming app on iOS now. It's the final part of the Tour Report from Secret Golf. This week it's an Olympic special. So we've gone through each of our gold, silver and bronze medalists and we're on to, well, the dark horse. Guys, further down in our re-ranking that could jump up and Elk you made a really good point at the start of the show that these bigger name guys are all going for the gold medal and winning silver or bronze won't really mean that much to them in the grand scheme of things it's not like they get FedEx cup points or more money for it however for one of these guys that's further down in the re-ranking winning an Olympic medal is career defining Oh, there's no doubt. I mean, I asked everyone before the show who was second and third in the medals in uh, last Olympics, and everyone stumbled right out of the gate. We finished up with Henry Stenson and Matt Kuchar. Uh, it depends who wins them. If a sort of a maybe a dark horse we're going to talk about next jumps in, that would be a big story. A Slovakian maybe, uh, uh, Jay, or some of these other smaller countries uh could have a player that emerges at the end, and that's what this segment's about. Yeah, I think we, when we talked about the dark horse, it, it, we did talk about which country are we talking about. I mean, if you're from a country that I can't even figure your three-letter code out, you're probably excited about playing in the Olympics. If you're USA or if you're Australia, maybe it just feels like another event. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see because, Elk, as we got our chart spit out this week, Page two was like trying to read Swahili for me. I don't, I looked at some of these names and some of these countries and I have no idea who some of these cats are. So as soon as this show is over, I'm going to go back and really study some of these guys just so I can get familiar with the field. But it'll be interesting to see who can come from down in the pack. Okay, Elk, I don't think we're looking too far down the pack for yours, but let's... Go with it, give it to us and we can tear it apart. 
Well, this is a very top-heavy field, of course, this week, <laughs> Diane, being that the all the top players that we know of are up top. But picture this, okay? Work with me here. If there's not a big storm that comes in Sunday, let's say we're going to have good weather, uh, no typhoon, we've got all the guys at the top. Morikawa's up there, Matsuyama, you know, Justin Thomas, Hovland, they're all at the top of the field. But wait, here comes in the pack, like Ledecky last night, who had the lead, Titmus, our 200 meter freestyle swimming girl, tracked her down at the end, and here comes Cam Smith. Takes his hat off with a couple holes left. He's got the Oz cut into the side of his head, and he's gonna blitz through the field on the back nine with the number one putter and just take over the Olympic golf. Go Aussie! I don't know whether to be offended or flattered that you have picked my bronze medalist, i.e. the top, and you're making him a dark horse. There's no way that he is a dark horse. Late runner. He's a late runner. He's coming in late. Jay, I know Jay agrees with me. Diane, I think you know what our, our <laughs> criteria is for a dark horse. It's usually Vegas making that line, and, and we've gone with 100 to 1 or higher odds for that and elk has gone with a player who is <laughs> currently 22 to 1 which means vegas thinks he definitely vegas will back elk's story cam smith can definitely win it nobody would be surprised if he won it he's already performed and won on the world's greatest tour so elk i want to totally agree with everything you've said, but I just think you have him in the wrong category. He's definitely not a dark horse. I would put him in the top 15 of guys who have a chance to win this event yeah. for sure. I have nothing more to say. <laughs> that's, a, that's a typical Aussie pick, I would tell you. Just foregoing the criteria. What's your dark horse then? You going with the Swahili? My dark horse I'm going with another Scandinavian player to match my Victor Hovland pick, uh, his next door neighbor. Um, I really like this player. You know, he his last outing, he finished with a T5 at Barbasol, which is a completely different climate and part of the world, so I'm not comparing the two. But he did perform, and he's a guy that's got good numbers across our board on our chart, with the exception of driving distance. I think he's going to overcome that and make a few putts this week. And I think we're all going to be, uh, I'm not going to be surprised if we're all celebrating with a big helping of Swedish meatballs this week. So my dark horse pick is Heinrich Norlander. Okay. I was so big on Henrik Norlander for so long for on our regular show following the PGA Tour. And he started to let me down, so I just had to jump off that bandwagon. But I'll take him. Yeah, I'll take him. he's a he's a very solid ball striker, so just has to keep it here and not out here. <laughs> All right, Diane. I, I'm just I'm just I'm just holding my wait. breath to see where you go on this pick. All right then. Well, here we go. My dark horse pick is actually only sixty to one, Jay. I'm just facing up right now, but. But when you look at the odds, there's actually not too many um, well-known guys that are super high odds this week. So my guy went to University of Illinois. He's from Belgium. So I'm thinking it's a plus point that he's very well-traveled. You know, he, he like paid his dues on the challenge tour, the feeder tour to the European tour. He plays European tour most of the time, but with his fantastic world golf ranking, he has been playing in a lot of the WGCs and the majors. So he's been kind of here, there and everywhere. Played great at the Scottish Open. See a little bit of a heart pick here, here and here ended up finishing runner up. Um, in 2018, he represented his country at the World Cup of Golf alongside Thomas Peters and they won. So he has that Belgian pride and I think that he's with Thomas Peters this week. You know, obviously this is a solo event, but I think that Thomas Dietrich could get it rolling and at 60 to one could sneak up there into the medals. I think you're confusing the medals this week with frequent flyer miles, I think, uh, was what he's the winner of, I think, by the way you said all that. But yeah. 
I still, I still stand by my dark horse, Cam Smith. I don't think he's going to hold pace in the beginning of the week, but I'm dark horse coming in from over in the back. The back. <laughs> I mean, oh, I think the only medal that Mr. Dietrich's going to win is made of chalk, Belgian chocolate. That's what he's going to walk away with as a parting gift. I just love that. I mean, really. You know, I, I, um, Diane, you, you have fallen into this trend of taking these European golfers as your dark horse pick, and a lot of times they're pretty good picks. They perform for you. So, Diane's banking on his second place finish in the Scottish Open two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's her Apparently form. So. current form. Oh, Apparently listen, so. if Hank Leviosa was in the field, you'd know I'd be picking him. <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking forward to seeing at this tournament this week? Uh, I'll start with you, Diane. What are you looking forward to most about watching the Olympic golf? I think I'm just really excited to see the course. Kasuma Gaseki Country Club. I love I love golf on the world stage and I just think it's going to be great to see the characteristics of this course. It's a course that we really didn't know much about until the guys turned up and there was a little bit of buzz from journalists and from some of the players playing practice rounds. So I'm just excited to see it and I love the fact that more and more people are talking about golf out with this bubble of the PGA Tour. And I think that just to get more eyes on this sport on the Olympic stage, I mean, it's you can't you can never argue with that. Jay, what are you most looking forward to seeing this week? Well, it's the Olympics. I, I, you know, every four years, it sneaks up on me that the Olympics are here, and I'm always like, ah, eh, who really? I'm not really that interested. And then all of a sudden, it's on, and I get into it, and I want the United States to perform, and I do find myself really getting invested into how the U.S. fares and then seeing how these other countries fare. So this is a very unique thing to be able to, you know, the Ryder Cup, those guys get to play, but it's a very select group and it isn't a, a world thing. The President's Cup does bring in the rest of the world, but there's not really that individual event where money doesn't matter. This is the one week where money doesn't matter that if you actually win it, as Justin Rose did, you get to walk around the rest of your life as a gold medal champion, something that every other athlete in the Olympic Village is trained their entire life for. So I can imagine getting swept up in that, playing for your country. And I think what I find the most interesting is it's strictly about pride and, and that will matter. That does matter at the end. At the end of the Olympics, it matters that you performed for your country. So that's- a Justin good Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> what I hope to see this week may not happen, but there's a chance that one of these young players that we don't know on the tour, and we pretty much know everybody, uh, as far as tour players are concerned, that could find himself in under pressure on the last round of the Olympics, in amongst some of the greatest world players, and that story may unfold. But the other thing is, of course, I'm looking forward to seeing how Olympic pressure affects these top players. Because as Jay noted, it's not for money, it's for pride and country. And I'm just looking forward to it. Yeah, that's great. Right, guys, thank you so much. That was a lot of fun. We will have our medal ceremony next Monday to see who takes bronze, silver, and the all important gold. And we'll be back with the tour report. Well, next week, two events. WGC in Memphis for the FedEx St. Jude Invitational and then the Barracuda in Reno as well. So counting down to those FedEx Cup playoffs and we'll dive into it next week.